This video is designed to explain how we can get a very specific solution preparation. In other words, how can we prepare a solution of a particular molarity uh, and get an exact volume of some kind of that solution? How do we prepare solutions? And of course, the big thing to keep in mind here is we can really do it three ways. One way is to use pure solute and solvent. In other words, if I want to make a sodium chloride solution, I'd take a certain amount of solid sodium chloride and somehow combine it with the right amount of water. Another way is using another solution that contains the solute you're interested in. Another solution of the solute might be more concentrated or it might be less concentrated and the goal is to get the concentration you want from this other solution. And so there are different ways to prepare solutions so there are different rules we have to follow. But the one thing I'm going to keep in mind the whole while is one simple thing. Keep a focus on the moles of solute. That's the key to correctly preparing a solution. Getting the correct number of moles of solute because moles of solute are just really a fancy way of describing large numbers of solute particles. And if I wanted to create 1.2 molar solution of something and it's half a liter, I'm going to need six tenths of a mole of whatever the solute is. And that's a certain number of particles. It's half of, well, it's six tenths of Avogadro's number. So getting the right number of particles to create the solution is the key to success. The rest is just of adjusting the volume the particles are in. Adjust it smaller, you get a more concentrated solution. Adjust it to a larger volume, you get a less concentrated solution. But you can't make any kind of solution without the correct number of particles. That's key. So the first thing you're always going to do in preparing a solution is calculate how many moles of solute you need. Now another thing that's going to be commonplace in these problems is one of these things. This right here is called a volumetric flask. And the name volumetric flask is somewhat self-explanatory. It's a flask and to meter something means to measure and we're measuring a volume. These flasks have only one marking, this little line right here that I've magically erased for you using a white pen. And what this line represents is the point at which if you were filling this with some sort of solution when the meniscus just touches that line, you know you have the exact volume of solution that this flask measures. So if, say it were a 250 milliliter volumetric flask, reaching the meniscus at this point, this line, would tell you you have exactly 250 milliliters of solution. So how do we prepare various solutions? And I've got some examples for you right here. For instance, what if we wanted to prepare 250 milliliters of 1.5 molar sodium chloride solution. And in this case, let's make it from sodium chloride and water. Well, first I need to focus on how much solute do I need. And I'm going to need 1.5 moles of sodium chloride for every liter of solution that I wish to make. And in this case, I wish to make 0.250 liters of solution which is what 250 milliliters are. But since I can't very easily measure out moles of a substance in the lab on a balance, I need to know what mass that is. And sodium chloride has a molar mass of 58.5 grams per mole. So I could calculate that I need 21.9 grams of sodium chloride or I will not get the job done. I'm not going to be able to make the solution. So the whole goal of this problem is getting this correct mass into that volume of solution. And that's where our friend the volumetric flask comes in. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to first place the 21.9 grams of sodium chloride inside the container. Now 
when an ionic compound dissociates in water, uh, the ions become hydrated with water, and that actually results in the water becoming denser around the ions and the volume shrinking a little bit. So the correct way to answer this question is throw the correct amount of sodium chloride into the correct size volumetric flask, in this case 250 milliliters, then add a little bit of water, just enough water so that all of the ionic compound dissociates. And once it's dissociated and you have individual ions of sodium and chloride floating around in this little bit of water, they have been fully hydrated by the water molecules and so you won't see any shrinkage of volume from then on. So after you add the correct amount to the correct size container and add enough water to dissociate all of the ionic compound, then you'd add enough more water to achieve the exact volume you wish of 250 milliliters. You don't have to say what amount, just say add enough water to achieve a total volume of 250 milliliters. So that's the way you can easily prepare a solution from a solid and the solute, or excuse me, the solvent. Now, this is a different way to prepare a solution, or actually before we go into other ways of preparing them, we should talk about dilutions. Now you see, if I had a solution say 25 milliliters of it and it were the same molarity as in part one, 1 1.5 molar and then I were to suddenly add enough water to increase its volume to 80 milliliters from 25 milliliters well by adding water we don't change how much solutes in the solution but what we do change is the volume of space in which the solute is found. And since molarity is a ratio of moles of solute to volume of solution, and of course all we did by adding water was affect the volume of solution, increase it, the concentration decreases, something known as dilution. We just diluted the solution. And if we're going to understand how else to prepare other solutions from certain solutions, we've got to be able to calculate what the molarity of the solution is after diluting. Now, there is an equation you can use always, namely the molarity of the concentrated solution times the volume of the con concentrated solution should always equal the molarity after dilution times the volume after dilution. And if you're asking why does that work, well, very simply, moles per liter times liters is moles of solute. And by adding water, we don't change moles of solute. So moles of solute, when it's concentrated, should still equal moles of solute after it's diluted. It doesn't mean these two values don't change. Yes, the volume of the concentrated solution would go up when you dilute but the molarity of the concentrated solution would go down when you dilute. So here, you can just do it proportionally. Namely, if we have a 1.5 molar solution, and we increase the volume by 80 25ths, well, we would have to decrease the molarity by the same proportion. Decrease it by 25th, 25 80ths. And it's the same as using this equation, because in this equation, the concentrated molarity was 1.5 molar. The concentrated volume was 25, so I'm multiplying those two numbers. And then to solve for the diluted molarity, I would divide by the dilute volume of 80 milliliters. So whether I think of it as an inverse proportion when I dilute something, or I think of it as an equation, either way, I can easily calculate the change in concentration if I change a volume of a solution. Now that's important to know when we go to answer other questions. For instance, how would we prepare 500 milliliters of 0.255 molar sodium chloride solution from, well, A, sodium chloride and water? Now we've already explained how to do that in the first problem. We'd use a volumetric flask, 500 milliliters in this case. We'd use the volume and molarity to calculate 
the number of moles of sodium chloride we need, and we would place the correct number of grams of sodium chloride into a 500 milliliter flask, add sufficient water to dissociate it all, and then add enough water to create exactly 500 milliliters of solution. However, this is a more interesting situation here. How would you create 0.255 molar sodium chloride solution from a 0.56 molar sodium chloride solution? And this is easy to visualize. The 0.56 molar sodium chloride solution is more concentrated than what I want. So what I'm going to do is take a certain amount of this solution and increase the volume so that the same number of moles spread out in a larger volume. So how do I figure that out? Well, I figure it out the same way I figure everything out. How many moles of sodium chloride do I need to create my solution? And I need 0.255 moles sodium chloride for every liter of solution I wish to make. And in this example, I want to make half a liter, 0.500 liters of solution. Which means, of course, which means I need 0.128 moles of sodium chloride. Now, where are those moles coming from? You see, if it were part A, they'd be coming from the solid. I convert this to a mass, and I know what mass of the solid sodium chloride I need. But in this problem, it's coming from this solution. So, of course, a certain volume of the solution would contain that many moles, and it's easy to calculate what volume of the solution contains that many moles. Because for every one liter of the solution, there should be 0.560 moles. And I need to make the solution I want 0.128 moles, which means I need 0.228 liters of this concentrated solution to get the right number of moles. In other words, I need 228 milliliters of the concentrated sodium chloride to get enough moles that if I give it the right volume, it'll produce a solution that is 500 milliliters of 0.255 molar sodium chloride. So what do I do? Well, I take this concentrated solution and I measure out in a graduated cylinder or something 228 milliliters or 0.228 liters of the solution. That gives me the right number of moles. And then all I do is add enough water so that it's diluted to 500 milliliters. In other words, take 228 milliliters of the concentrated solution and add roughly 272 milliliters of water, growing the volume to 500 milliliters. And I would have this molarity instead of that molarity. Now, I can do the same thing if I use a solution that is less concentrated than the solution I want. Because what I'm saying is my solute particles are not concentrated enough in this solution. So what I'm going to do is drive off some of the water and make the same number of solute particles play in a smaller space, become more concentrated. How do you do that? Well, if I'm using a solution that in every one liter has 0.167 moles of the solute I want, and I still want 0.128 moles of that solute, it means from this more dilute solution, I'm going to need 0.766 liters of it to get enough solute. In other words, 766 milliliters. So if I take 766 milliliters of this dilute solution and somehow take the correct number of moles, that many that are in it, and shrink it down to a volume of 500 milliliters, I'll have this molarity instead of that molarity down there. So how do I shrink? 266 milliliters down to 500 milliliters? Well, I'd take 266 milliliters of solution, put it on a hot plate in a beaker, and evaporate 
266 milliliters of water and I'd be left with 500 milliliters of solution containing the right number of moles to give me this molarity.